Hey y'all, I'm Thomas from Corona24. We are not in New York. We are actually in the beautiful British countryside in Hertfordshire with this amazing new space. And today I'm sitting down with Joe McKenzie. We've been chumming it up here all week, but real quick, do you want to just introduce who you are? Yeah, sure. So welcome, first of all, Thomas. It's great to have you here. So I'm Joe. I, uh, I founded Zoops, which was a pre-owned watch business that also sold handbags and jewelry uh, 12 years ago. Um, the business entered a partnership with Chrono24 back in October, uh, and over the past 12 months, we've been developing this new concept here, which is the barn. Um, got into watches through passion, started selling them uh, on eBay, actually, when eBay was like in its infancy. Yeah. And um, it developed and snowballed. I sold my first few Cartiers, that got me into a few other things. Uh, and I saw that there was actually a need for doing something a bit different in the watch market, offering quality and service that otherwise wasn't really being done properly. I did that and the business grew and um, I guess that's where it all started, so. We have a lot of really cool watches here, some big heavy hitters yes. that we'll get to in a few minutes, but where do you want to start? A little humble beginning maybe? Yeah, yeah, sure. So all of these mean slightly different things to me and came along at a different point. So this first one actually, the Baltic. Um, a limited edition as well, right? It is, yeah. So this is um, this is their Bicompax uh, limited edition that they did for uh, Revolution. Yep. It's 250 pieces, 36.5 millimeter case. Um, this dial is what made me buy the watch. So this salmon sector dial has this amazing sort of, I guess, um, it's almost like a sandy finish in the middle. That's what I think what they describe it as. Mm -hmm. And then it has this beautifully sort of, I guess, contrasting salmon section that's brushed. Yeah, and there's then, a lot of texture in a small amount of space. I mean, it, for a dial in a watch, which is under a thousand dollars, this is like, you know, I think it's a great watch. But it's chilling it. I bought it actually to sort of, commemorate a little bit of some of the things that were happening um, in the business this year and it came up it was just one of those things that I was like yeah I've got to have it I matched it to this lovely green suede strap yep. um, you've probably seen in here green is my favorite color and it's probably influenced some decisions in this barn in terms of wall colors and paints and stuff this, yeah I mean yeah, we got a lot of British racing green <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It's, I mean I'm, it's a bit cliche but I was well into green before it flew off in dial colors and um, so yeah, I mean it's um, it, it's yeah it's really lovely and it looks great on this strap with yeah. the salmon and it's got a bit of a joy to it. It's mechanical wind, so you know that's that's a really nice experience to wind your watch in the morning, set it, and I love doing that with it. Yeah, so. and the only chronograph on the table as well, so you get a little interactivity yes. there. Exactly. Not that I use the chronograph at all, yeah. but this is one of the, <laughs> one of the things. Um, Speaking of interactivity, the watch on your wrist has some yes. movement to it as well, which people will know. It does, yeah. So this one is, uh, this is a Jaeger Reverso Grand Tally. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, uh, and probably, not pronounced just that, probably pronounced that wrong because um, my French is not great. But um, but this, is, this isn't just any Reverso, no. Yeah, I saw a little uh, something on the case back earlier. So this is a limited edition of 30 pieces. Mm. I, I really like, that's one thing I really enjoy doing is having something that there's not too many of, um, just because you're not going to see it in the wild that often, and it's a talking point when you're speaking to other watch collectors and yeah. lovers. So, and I think that applies to everything, Baltic included, and this as well. Exactly. It doesn't matter how much it is. It's actually, you know, limited runs in watches have become a real thing in the last, uh, certainly in the last sort of three or four years. You know, hyped up sort of releases of watches where brands build up and, and I actually say Baltic's one of the best at that. I mean, they're one of the hottest micro brands at the moment. And, you know, every time they release something like that, it sells out. Anyone who's tried to buy one online can probably attest to that. Exactly. So what is it about this one that caught your eye? This one, I, I've i always wanted a Reverso. So, I mean, I think you've done some reviews on Reverso, so people know. They pop up every bit. now and then, yeah. They do, I've seen them there. And, it, and it's, it's a really cool watch because it was designed basically for polo players and the case flips around to protect the sapphire crystal and then obviously that would you know protect the watch against knocks and rigorous use um, in reality it's such a lovely aesthetic with the reverso that i fell in love with a long time ago this blue lacquer dial again a, a bit like a bit like the baltic has two textures one in the middle and one on the outer and it's just mm. mesmerizing and 
And in different lights, you kind of get looks, different levels of each, different colors, different textures. Yeah, I mean, it even looks, in here it looks very navy right now, but in certain mm. light, it almost looks purple. And it really pops, so I, I love it. And I love the Art Deco numerals. It's super clean, super easy to read. Um, and what's nice about this is it's automatic. So actually in this case size, most of them are mechanical wind, mm. but this is the automatic version. Um, and that means I don't have to worry about winding it. It's something I can put in my winder and it runs and I just get it, put, take it out and put it on. Yeah, and just one less thing to worry about. One less thing to worry about. Now that you know we've been in the UK for a few days, probably the watch that I've seen you wear most is this guy here. Yeah. It's another one. another green, another green. I mean, arguably, this is my favorite watch in my collection. Um, yeah, I think you even said if it had to be one, it would be this. It would be this one. And why is that? Break it down for me. So this is um, this is a Laurent Ferrier, and Laurent Ferrier is an independent watchmaker from Switzerland. Um, their watches are some of the cleanest designs I've seen in the watches in, yeah. in the watches. And in the best world. proportioned, I would say. That's what always gets oh, me. I mean, this this dial, I just. I think you can look at it and you cannot find a flaw in how it's been put together. It's got this amazing sort of lighter green in the middle that goes to like a darker forest green on the outside. It's got these lovely little details in the numerals on the outer track and they're in yellow. And mm. it just, it's, it's not done garishly. It's, everything is done with so much thought and composition that I just think it's a, it's a watch I could just sit and look at on my wrist for hours. And I think it's, 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 that's why it probably gets the most wrist time. It's also really comfortable. I mean, 40 millimeters is kind of known as to be a perfect size for a man. Mm. That's why all Rolexes are 40, well, 40 millimeters. I know they've gone to 41 now, but you know, 40 millimeters actually is, I believe, a really, really considered size when you're looking at a wristwatch. What's the case material here? Titanium. Ah, so this and is, how does that how does that affect kind of the, the well, size and the feel? It was something. Titanium can sometimes be very grey. Um, yeah. And I actually think... And on like the Otto Finissimos and things like that, it, it they can, get a really and I, feel to them. I'm not sure I like that, but with this, the polished titanium, it kind of, it, it's actually, you can tell it's a different material to steel, but it's not too gray, that mm. it kind of looks, looks too different. Just a touch moodier, I feel like. I think so, yeah. yeah. It's got a mechanical wine movement, which you can see through the exhibition case back. Yes. Um, Lauren Ferrier just, I think their, their whole design aesthetic is about combining that beautiful sort of traditional, very balanced, very considered dial design with very modern mechanics and movement um, innovation. And this is this kind of embodies that. And I think when you look at it in the back here, it's it's just it's just a beautiful thing to behold. But this one I um, I actually bought from a from a dealer on Chrono 24 um, back in I think it was around 2000 and. 18 or 19 mm -hmm. yeah it came up a dealer had it on chrono 24 and i contacted him and bought it and i'm lucky i did because the day it went up he was like i've got 10 other inquiries on this watch joe so sure, you were pretty sure. you were pretty hot on it um and i love it yeah so we've seen three cool yeah. pieces already and now we're getting into some deep waters <laughs> two royal oaks two royal oaks where do you want to start we'll start with the 5402 uh, this one here. So Royal Oaks and AP for me have been close to my heart since I started. Mm -hmm. my, my kind of grail watch when I first got into watches was always a Royal Oak and always the 39 millimeter Royal Oak. And you talked before about, you know, in your uni days with the Cartiers and things like that and now almost like a forest fire, like you got rid of those and then now you're rebuilding up a collection yes. with some old growth trees just to torture the metaphor. But yeah. um, as far as icons go, you really can't get much better than this. I don't think so. And I love, I, I mean, I love, I, I particularly love these early 5402s. Um, this is a B series from 1982. I like it, but I don't love it. Is it the two-tone thing? The two-tone. So yeah. I thought I, I'd get a 5402. I couldn't quite afford the steel version at the time. And I probably should have just gone for that. It's like when you, you kind of, you half ask something and you don't quite go for what you really want. Um, I love it. I love this grey dial. I think it's got a beautiful patina and being a B series, it's got the early straight Aldemars PK font. Yep. It's completely original. Obviously it's been restored to like new condition looking at it. The bracelet's still really tight and that's something that's often a, 
a problem with these where they stretch. Mm -hmm. um, or any bracelet in general, really, but yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Particularly, I mean, as watch brands have evolved their bracelets, they've got better as the, the pins have become made out of solid um, material rather than having a hollow finish. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a problem with these, particularly with softer materials on the, on the, the link connectors. So, you know, that's when you really have the problem. So in two-tone watches, it's particularly, we see it a lot. Hmm. Happens a lot with the early five digit. Um, so you've learned quite a bit with this watch, I would say. Learned quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, and just through being in watches for the last 12 years. I mean, you handle a lot and you see a lot of different things and you yeah. learn what to look out for, what not to look out for. Yeah, which is um, the best thing about this hobby. I feel like you're like every single day you're learning something. Oh, every day is a school day. So I'm getting the feeling this might not be a permanent, permanent piece of your collection. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, even now looking at it, I, I still love it and I would love to peel these stickers off and wear it. But if I do and then I don't fully love it, then I'm going to regret doing that because um, now's an optimal time to sell it really, given its condition and it's just come back from AP. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a beautiful watch. I, I love the dial and I do like the two tones. Like two tones become a bit of a, it's come back in a bit. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, for years people didn't want two tone watches. And, um, it's all cyclical, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's cool. And and I have to say, I mean, the Royal Oak, the the whole story of the Royal Oak is fascinating. How it was designed in one night by Genta, you know, it marks such a moment in the creation of a steel sports watch, and um, you know, actually the world's most expensive steel sports watch when it first came out. It's yep. it yeah, it's an amazing history. Um, and so many watches have been influenced from that design that have been produced afterwards. And I think this porthole sort of case is, I, I actually prefer them, and this is a slightly provocative, I prefer them to the Patek Philippe Nautilus case. You're not alone. Yeah. I just think it's, you know, it's a better design in my eyes. It's a cleaner design, but I know some people prefer the Patek Nautilus, but this is, yeah, for me, it's, it's a beautiful watch. Well, speaking of one that you're not gonna sell. <laughs> no. Shall we introduce our special guest? Let's do it. So this watch here is the 39 millimeter Alamos PK Royal Oak Quantium Perpetual. It's a perpetual calendar, as I just alluded to. Yeah, the it's, it's is, a mouthful, but deserve it. It's so. a proper mouthful, this one, when you <laughs> explain it. And I wasn't even finished yet. It's a limited edition as well. <laughs> um, one of 25 pieces made for the 120th anniversary of AP. Um, and what's super special about this is the dial. Yeah. So blue dials in platinum or steel cases are like in Royal Oaks AP, in Royal Oaks um, Nautiluses, whatever it is in those top three um, are super, super coveted. And um, I bought this one from a very good client of mine who's also, um, I've done lots of business with, and I bought it in 2016, I think, at the end of 2016. This was a, you know, this watch really marked a milestone. And also it was just after I'd sold off my whole collection, so it was the first piece I kind of reinvested in. Um, and it was the best investment I made as well. It wasn't bought as an investment at the time, it was bought because I loved this watch. I've always wanted a perpetual calendar Royal Oak. Yeah. I love 39 mil, this is ultra thin, it just wears, it wears so beautifully. I mean, the AP bracelets are so comfortable and so accomplished in the design. Um, it's the best integrated bracelet in the market in my eyes. Um, this one has an amazing case back as well. It's got wow, the exhibition case back and this beautifully hand finished and engraved rotor. Yeah, they're not messing around. They're not. And this is this is you know this is a this is a piece that would come at the top of top of their collection as well. Probably one of the more expensive petrol calendars that were offered back then. Um, it's made in 1995, hmm. so it's what we would consider vintage. Um, what's nice about these dials is this is the Tuscan blue dial. Um, they've never done anything quite like it again, and it has this sort of swirly, like almost painted finish, but the metals, it, it's beautiful. It's really hard to explain without actually looking at it in the flesh. Yeah. Um, but I get it out from time to time and look at it and put it on and just, you know, just, I'm mesmerized by the dial. I yeah. think it's just stunning. You can have a look for yourself. But it's, it's just... yeah, I mean, it's, it's that kind of dilemma that I think a lot of people have faced in recent years. But yeah. one thing I love about this is it's like, it's the perfect pinnacle of kind of brawn and brains, basically, where you yes. have this like very, almost like brutalist yeah. Royal Oak case with a very intelligent perpetual calendar movement yeah. and 
highly, highly complicated, highly, highly yeah. finished as well in something that is very structural. Yeah. And this movement marks such a milestone in innovation in watchmaking. I mean, the ultra thin um, with the perpetual calendar, to have that kind of degree of complication in that thinner movement is incredible. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, there is certainly a lot squeezed in here. Yeah. Nice little weight to it as well. It has, yeah. It's not too heavy, it's, mm -hmm. but it, it wears. Compared to what it could be, for sure. Compared to what it could be. If it was full platinum, which they did make a few in this model, but arguably these are rarer in my eyes. I mean, the platinum and steels are the combination of the two materials, but it's down to personal views. I mean, lots of people like the plain steel version, lots of people like the platinum ones. Yep. But there was only a handful made, and the, the gold one we have as well, actually, I mean, that's even rarer. There was only probably about five to 10 of those made. So, um, but when you think there's 25 in the world, this one's a full set, it's got everything with it. Um, yeah, an auction level piece, let's yeah. say. I mean, to put it lightly. Yeah. <laughs> last, last question for you, Joe. You got a big event tonight, a lot of clients coming through, a lot of VIPs, the car park here will be filled with toys. It will. <laughs> what are you gonna wear? I might wear this one tonight. Yeah. Special so, occasion. For special sure. occasion, this one might get a little bit wrist stuck tonight. It creates the, probably the most conversations when I wear that one, so yeah. Joe, thanks for having us here in the UK at this beautiful new barn. It's cited for what's to come. We have more content ahead with you and some other folks here yes. and around the world in the Corona 24 family, so stay tuned for that. This has been Joe McKenzie. I'm Thomas Hendricks. Thanks for watching, and as always, enjoy your watches.